us up, please? Why? Sorry, guys. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> Let me begin by just giving you a little overview on the program, then I'll take questions. So today we have actually tested nine production pure power engines. So I, I call them production. Internally, we, we, we refer to them as development engines, but they are of, of a production vintage hardware. Uh, so we've tested five C-Series engines, totaling about 1,400 test hours, and four MRJ engines, totaling about 1,000 hours. So this is engine number four for the MRJ program. Engine number four is our uh, flight test, or I'll call our performance test engine that will do both ground and in-flight performance measurements. So as part of our in-flight program, it's a pretty extensive program, and we, certainly the first element is to characterize the engine for power, thrust, fuel efficiency, and overall engine handling characteristics in terms of acceleration, deceleration characteristics. Then we go through a series of what we call operability, which would be like uh, air starts, in-flight starting, with or without the starter, so we'll use what we call a windmill start, which is like a jump start, for those who remember pushing a, a vehicle years ago and doing a jump start. So we would, so we typically would use a starter assist uh, below 250 knots, and then above 250 knots or higher, we typically use a windmill start as a standard procedure. So we do starting, we'll do uh, handling characteristics in terms of uh, you know, engine overall characteristics in terms of acceleration, deceleration, uh, putting the engine through some, some wide, high angle maneuvers so we can look at characteristics during, a, let's say, a very aggressive maneuver on an airplane to understand how the inlet airflow characteristics are in terms of uh, engine overall operational characteristics. So it's a pretty extensive program. Uh, it, the value of doing it on a 747, the 747 uh, aircraft envelope is very wide, so we can actually test beyond what an MRJ or C-Series envelope is in terms of either angle of attack or airspeed. Uh, we'll, we'll fly as high as 41,000 feet, typically around 0 0.8 to 0.85 mark number, depending on uh, the overall characteristics of, uh, of the flight of that day. And on this particular program, we'll do about 12 flights about 60 total hours. So the first flight, as I said in the uh, conference room, was just under five hours, and we were really limited by crew time. You know, the crew has an eight-hour test test window. So we do, like, prior to doing the first flight, we actually did a ground test, then we ground test performance on the airplane. And so by the time we actually got airborne, we had just a little less than five hours of uh, flight time to, to meet the eight-hour curve. So overall program's doing well. We've got about 7,500 what we call cycles, cycles, endurance cycles on the uh, on both engine models. That allows us to really look at the integrity of the engine for high temperature operation. So we have done uh, all of the critical testing for certification in terms of prior to doing the actual engine test, we have done bird ingestion. We've done fan blade release. We have done those in a laboratory environment using uh, a production module, fan, fan blade, fan module, but powered by an electric turbine. So we do that to validate the ability of the engine to, do, to handle bird ingestion or, or contain a blade release. And now we will then do that testing this summer on the C-Series and then later this year, really next year, on the MIJ. So the C-Series is, is on schedule to certify fourth quarter, and the MRJ will certify uh, early next year. With that, I'll uh, take any questions. Have you had to change or add any new tests because of the gear? So the question is, have we added any new tests or changed our test procedure because of the gear? From an airworthiness perspective, Geared and non-geared, or what we call direct drive, have all the same fundamental requirements. The only thing that we have done is we have a uh, a fan a fan drive gear system laboratory in our Middletown facility. Some of you may have have uh, had an opportunity to visit that uh, in the past. And 
within that particular rig, we have the ability of running beyond flight evaluations in terms of uh, characteristics like uh, altitude or um, what we call G maneuvers, flight maneuvers. So in that particular rig, we have tested over 5,000 hours and we've done over 70,000 takeoffs of operation to date so over about the last uh, two and a half years. The rig started to run in July of 2007 and we've now run seven laboratory tests. We actually got our eighth, uh, our eighth program uh, getting ready to begin. So, so to answer your question, no special tests were geared versus non, our direct drive or non-geared, but we are doing some extensive testing on the gear system itself. The testing that we've done is we have tested as high as 55, we've simulated as high as 55,000 foot conditions. We've tested as high as 60 degrees angle of attack. A typical airplane is in the upper 20s, 25, 26 typically is a maximum angle of attack. We've run cold oil, hot oil, contaminated oil. So we've done those type of tests to validate the operational characteristic under some extreme conditions. And to date, the gear system has been uh, flawless in the overall operation. So we're really quite pleased. In fact, I keep on te teasing my chief engineer that we've over-designed it, and I think we've got a lot of weight we can take out of the next generation <laughs> pan drive gear system.